For complete understanding of operations of this control, please print and read the control sections from the operator's manual provided with this saw on disk. The operations manual, along with this video, will provide more complete instruction on how to safely operate this control. Remember, never wear gloves while operating the saw. Gloves can catch on the blade, pulling you into the cutting area, resulting in severe injury or even death. After the correct voltage supply is connected to the electric service box, the main power switch is moved to the on position at the box, and the red emergency stop button on top of the control console is checked by twisting the button slightly while gently pulling upward. You can power up the control panel. Place all of the control switches on the control panel to the left or neutral position. Then move the spring-loaded power switch to the start position while pressing the green start button. The power on light should now be illuminated. The motor switch is turned to off while powering up the saw or to turn the blade motor off. The motor switch is turned to auto to start and stop the blade automatically for the semi-automatic mode or Turn to on while simultaneously pressing the start button to start the motor and blade to cut in the manual mode. The vice switch is turned to open while powering the saw up or releasing the vice from the material. The vice switch is turned to auto to open automatically after the cut is complete or turn to close to clamp the vice on the material. The arm switch is turned to cut while powering the saw up or cutting apart manually. The arm switch is turned to auto when cutting in semi-automatic mode or turned to lift to raise the saw arm up. The coolant switch is turned to off to stop any coolant flow, turned to auto to run coolant when the motor is running, or turned to on to run it continuously as when using the rinse down hose. The auto button is pressed simultaneously with a start button to begin a semi-automatic cut. Vice pressure is adjusted using the variable vice pressure or clamping force knob. When cutting solid materials, maximum vice pressure is recommended. When cutting thin wall material, place the material in the vise, and starting with a vise pressure very low, slowly increase the pressure until at the point before any deformation occurs. In general, it is desirable to have the maximum vise pressure holding the material while at the same time not damaging it with too much force. The cutting force knob controls how heavy the arm is when the blade is cutting. The higher the number, the heavier the blade will cut into the material. A heavy cut would be with the cutting force gauge adjusted to 7 or higher. The lower the number, the lighter the blade is. A light cut would be approximately 4.5 or 5 on the scale. The feed rate control regulates how fast the arm moves through free air and sets the maximum rate of travel. To slow down the traverse rate, turn the feed rate knob clockwise. To speed up the traverse rate, turn the feed rate knob counterclockwise. Turning the feed rate knob all the way close to the right will prevent the arm from falling as long as there is air pressure to the saw. The saw's arm height can be adjusted to different heights by moving the height stop up or down. Do not inadvertently place the upper stop collar pin below the collar rather than through one of the holes drilled through the collar. If the upper arm height is set and the pin is removed and replaced incorrectly, the upper limit switch may be activated prematurely before the blade has cleared the material. This could cause damage to the blade, the material, or the saw. To make a manual cut, Adjust the arm height with the upper arm stop to have it close enough to the material so that the arm does not have too much free fall before starting the cut. Lift the arm by turning the arm switch over to the lift position. The feed rate and cutting pressure should also be correctly set for the material to be cut. Place the material in the vise making sure it is lying flat on the vise ways and in the cutting area. 
turn the vise to the closed position. Always check the vise pressure to determine that it is sufficient to hold the part, but not high enough to deform smaller sections or thinner walled material. Keep hands and arms away from the vise when operating the vise. For a trim cut, place the end of the material far enough past the blade to trim the material as needed. Once the material is securely clamped in the vise and the arm is set to the appropriate height, start the motor by turning the spring-loaded motor switch to the start position while pressing the green start button on the upper right of the control. To initiate the cut, turn the arm switch in the left cut position. This will allow the arm to fall at the set feed rate and start the cut at the set cutting pressure. When the blade completes the cut, move the arm switch right to the lift position and move the motor switch to the off position. To remove the material from the closed vise, move the vise switch to open. The M or manual control panel is capable of making a semi-automatic cut by placing the operation switches in the auto mode. To make a semi-automatic cut in auto mode, adjust the arm height with the upper arm stop to have it close enough to the material so that the arm does not have too much free fall before starting the cut. Lift the arm by turning the arm switch over to the lift position. The feed rate and cutting pressure should also be correctly set for the material to be cut. Place the material in the vise, making sure it is laying flat on the vise ways and in the cutting area. Keep hands and arms away from the vise when operating the vise. For a trim cut, place the end of the material far enough past the blade to trim the material as needed and follow the making a manual cut as described earlier, or make the trim cut in the auto mode for a semi-automatic cutting sequence. For a predetermined length part, mark your material at the correct length and place the material so that the mark is aligned with the path of the blade. Once the material is ready to cut, put the motor, vise, and arm switches in the auto position. Start the semi-automatic cutting sequence by pressing the green auto button simultaneously with the green start button. The motor will start, the vise will close, and the arm will fall. At the end of the cut, the motor will turn off, the arm will raise, and the vise will open. The emergency stop on the top of the control console shuts off all power to the control as well as the motor and blade. When the emergency stop on the top of the control console is pressed, the arm will fall and the control will be without power. Twist the spring-loaded emergency stop button to release it and restart the saw back up. The panic button located on the outside end of the control console will shut off the motor and stop the saw blade, but will not shut all power off to the control console. When the panic button is pressed, the broken blade light will illuminate. To reset the broken blade indicator, turn the motor switch to off, then turn the power switch right to start. The air bypass valve must be opened slightly to allow airflow through the system. If the screw valve is closed and air does not pass through, operations like arm descent will be jerky. The adjustable guide arm can be moved by loosening the locking bolt, cranking the hand crank to push, or pull the adjustable guide arm to the desired position. Tighten the locking bolt back to lock the guide arm in place. In general, the guide arm should be as close to the material as possible without allowing the guide arm to make contact with it. For safety, always be sure the sliding blade guard that attaches to the adjustable guide arm is in place before operating the saw. Do not adjust the guide arm with the motor running. To change the blade speed, turn the band motor on and rotate the blade speed handle. To increase speed, turn the handle clockwise. To decrease speed, turn the handle counterclockwise. The blade must be running before changing blade speed. Never attempt to change blade speed if the motor is not running. If you try to change blade speed while the band motor is stopped, serious damage to the motor pulley will result. 
Blade speed is easily and quickly controlled with an infinitely variable speed drive that lets you select the best cutting speed by simply pressing the buttons to slow or speed up the blade speed. The blade speed is shown on the LED readout. The power brush is used to help remove cutting chips from the blade. The brush should be adjusted so that the end of the wire just sweeps through the gullet between the teeth. If the brush is adjusted too close to the blade, it may cause premature dulling of the blade and will cause the wire brush to wear out quickly. The saw has manual blade tension unless the powered blade tension option is available for your saw and was ordered when your saw was purchased. To tension the blade, turn the T-handle down to within one-eighth inch of the flat washer. Do not over-tension the blade. For safety, never stand in front of the T-handle while turning it. Hold-down fixtures aid in the clamping of multiple pieces of material in a single row. Slip the hold-down fixture bracket over the vice plate extension on the fixed side of the vice until the fixture plate sits firmly on the row of parts and tighten the set screws to lock the fixture into position on the vice. There are two lockdown bolts at the pivot end of the saw. These bolts can be tightened when 90 degree cuts are going to be made. Tightening these bolts will provide more stability to the arm on a mitering pivot saw when making 90 degree cuts. They are loosened to allow the arm to swing to the desired angle when making a miter cut. In order to swing the arm over to make a miter cut, first be sure the arm is raised enough for the blade to clear the cut slot. If the 90 degree lockdown bolts are tightened, Loosen them before attempting to rotate the arm for a miter cut. Loosen the cam lock handle and rotate the arm until the pointer aligns with the desired angle on the protractor scale. Lock the cam lock lever down before cutting. If the cam lock lever is too tight to enable locking it down, or too loose to adequately lock, it can be adjusted using the Allen head bolt located in the cam lock lever mount. Always turn the motor off before moving the arm for a miter cut. Check the adjustable guide arm location. The arm may require opening to clear the material or the raised cutting discharge plate. Also take note to loosen and slide the movable vertical support on the discharge plate. If this is not moved back and the arm is rotated, the vertical support will be cut along with the material.